When I was asked to speak tonight, I wasn't sure what I was going to talk about, but I decided to cover a lesson that was assigned me at Polishing the Pulpit this year, and it was a question, is technology killing God's people? I thought it was kind of a strange assignment to give to me because for the last 17 years, I've been working with the Gospel Broadcasting Network. It is an organization that has as its goal to use every means of technology to reach people with the gospel. So what's my point? My point is technology is not necessarily bad. It's the way that we're using technology that makes it good or bad, and the way we're using it at GBN I think is very, very good. Now in the beginning, GBN was primarily about satellite TV, but in the last several years, we have made a strong push toward social media. And we engage a lot of people on social media. Every single week, we have contacts. And on average, a week never goes by that we don't have at least one baptism. And what ends up happening is people contact us as a result of the work that we're doing. They see our videos. We study with them via Zoom or the telephone. Then we find a local congregation and we put them in touch with the preacher to follow up and study. And then once they have been baptized, we ask them to contact us, send a picture so that we can track it. And it's been a very good system for us. If you're interested in knowing more about GBN or the work that we're doing, please let me know. I would be glad to talk to you about that because we exist. We don't sell anything at GBN. We exist by the support of congregations of the Lord's Church. One of the things that we are doing at GBN that is a tool for the Brotherhood is we have an app. If you don't have the GBN app, you ought to download it. You can get it on your iPhone, on your Android device, on your iPad. You can get it on any sort of mobile device, but also on your computer. Download that. It has gospel material, lessons on everything you can think of. We also have the books of the Bible, and we have running commentary so that you can watch video commentary. But one of the things we've just recently added that is a great tool is we are now putting out commentaries on books of the Bible, written commentaries. We now have 53 of the 66 books of the Bible covered, and you can go there, you can download them. They are completely free. It is very meaty. It is full of substance, and it is sound material. So if you are teaching through uh, whatever book of the Bible, if you're going to teach through Isaiah, go to the site, download Isaiah, and use it, and it will give you a detailed study. And again, it is free. So one of the things that has motivated us is we have be become aware of some brethren using unsound material because it was available to them on the Internet. And we said we need to counteract that. Brethren, I believe that God has providentially allowed us to develop the incredible means of modern technology so that we can reach people with the gospel. On the day of judgment, if the Lord were to ask us, why did you not take the gospel to the entire world, we might be tempted to say, well, Lord, there were eight billion people. How could we possibly reach all of those people? To which he might respond, why didn't you use the technology that I gave you? Why didn't you use the internet and smartphones and devices that were always connected? Brethren, I don't believe that God has given us all of the modern technology that we have so that we can binge watch Netflix. But you see, the problem is the devil knows how to use technology as well, and he's good at it. Now, I love technology. I have an iPhone, I have an iPad, I have an Apple Watch, a MacBook Pro, an iMac. When I wake up in the morning, the first thing that I do is I reach over and I turn off the alarm that's ringing on my iPhone. And then I pick up my phone, I check my text messages, my emails, my Facebook, the morning news. I reach over and I adjust the air conditioner through the app on my phone. I tell Alexa to turn the lamp off. In fact, uh, the Alexa devices have been very helpful to me since I've been in the wheelchair. They are a great blessing for us to communicate in the house, but our modern lives are entwined with technology. 
Now, before I get into the meat of this lesson, I want to define my terms. When I talk about technology, I'm referring to smartphones, tablets, the internet, television, movies, media, all of the high-tech delivery devices that we communicate with to include social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube, etc. All of these things have brought us some new challenges. When Sherry and I first got married, we didn't have a cell phone. I, I didn't know anyone who had a cell phone. I didn't own a computer. I didn't really much know what a computer was. I'd never heard of the internet. I had, uh, uh, didn't have email. Those things are all relatively new devices in society. But the question is, is it hurting us? Is technology hurting God's people? There are four points that I want to cover in the lesson tonight. They are minutes, morality, misinformation, and mission. Minutes, morality, misinformation, and mission. First, let's talk about minutes. And by that, I just mean our time. Brethren, technology is a huge time sucker. A while back, Facebook started including these short little videos called TikTok videos, and they very quickly learn what you like to watch. And so if you like basketball, they're going to show you basketball videos. And I like guns and knives, and show, so it shows me videos uh, according to your interest, and it's extremely addictive. And so you watch one and you watch another, and I mean, after all, they're only a few seconds long or a minute long, and so you think it's not that much. And I realized one day that I sat and I watched one after another after another, and I realized I had killed an hour and gained absolutely nothing. You know, John 9 and verse 4, Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, for the night comes when no man can work. Friends, our Lord was saying, I have work that I have been put here to do, and I've got to stay on task. I have to manage my time. I cannot allow myself to be, become so distracted that I don't accomplish my mission. And most of social media does exactly that. In fact, can you imagine the time that would be regained if every Christian in the world would lay aside social media for one day and spend that time evangelizing instead? Or what about a week? What if for one week we said, I won't do any social media, but I will use that time to evangelize? What if we did that for a year? You know, I think about Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. The idea of redeeming is buying it back. And it doesn't mean the days are evil in the sense that they're wicked, but they're slipping away from us, and I'm trying to redeem it. I'm trying to, to get it back. I think we can appreciate that idea. We have to be diligent to make good use of our time because it slips through our grasp, and I can't get it back. Have you ever had a day that you started off and you had a, a grand list of things that you intended to accomplish, but you got to the end of the day and you got absolutely nothing done and you don't know where the day went? You ever had that happen? Forbes.com says, in 2021, Americans spent 3.5 hours per, per day on social media. More than 1,300 hours per person last year on average, that is 25 hours per week. If you could get that back, that would be a full additional day. In fact, if you think about an eight-hour workday, that is three additional days you would get back per week. It said that Facebook led the way with 58 minutes per day. Now, I want you to do some math with me. If an average person begins using social media at the age of 13, probably younger than that, and he lives to be 79, let's break this down. Over a lifespan, that is nearly 10 years spent doing social media. For comparison's sake, one company gave this information. They, sa <clears throat> they said watching TV, the average person spends seven years and eight months. Eating and drinking, they spend three years and five months. Grooming, one year and ten months. Socializing, one year and three months. And doing laundry, 
six months. I know it feels longer than that, but they say it's only six months. Now, what that means is the average person will spend more time in his life on social media than doing laundry, socializing, and grooming put together. He spends more time on social media than he spends eating and drinking. Do you think we're distracted by social media? Presently, the average American spends more time on social media than uh, more than 12% of his time on social media. Now, I want you to consider how many people will say, I don't have time to study my Bible. I don't have time to memorize Scripture. I don't have time to conduct a Bible study. Maybe we don't because we're distracted. Maybe we don't because technology is hurting us. Common Sense Media found that the overall screen use time amongst teens and tweens increased 17% in the last two years. I suspect COVID had something to do with that. But on average, daily screen use time amongst tweens, I didn't know what a tween was, but it says that that is 8 to 12 years old. They said average screen time is 5 hours and 33 minutes. That would include television. The average time for teens is 7 hours and 22 minutes, ages 13 uh, to 18. Years ago, I heard Brother Wendell Winkler deliver a sermon. I mentioned him this morning. He was one of my heroes. Brother Winkler said that he was teaching a class on stewardship, and he suggested at a particular congregation that they set 10% aside as a goal for giving to the Lord. And he said there was an elderly sister, probably in her 80s, and she raised her hand, and she said, Brother Winkler, can I make a suggestion or ask a question? And he said, sure. She said, we always suggest that we give 10% of our money to the Lord. Why don't we suggest the same thing with regard to our time? Isn't that a great suggestion? Let's break that down. There's 168 hours in a week. So 10% rounded up would be 17 hours a week. And so let's say that a man reads his Bible and he prays for one hour every day. That's seven hours a week. Let's say that same man attends all of the services of the Lord's church, Sunday morning Bible class, Sunday morning worship, Sunday evening, midweek service, and one other function during the week, uh, men's training class, fellowship meal, whatever it is, one other function to give him five hours. That brings him to a total of 12 hours. Now let's say that same man gets off work every day at 4 o'clock, and on Monday he visits the nursing home for one hour. On Tuesday, he visits the hospital for one hour to see his brethren who might be there. Wednesday, he goes and visits any visitors who might have come to the services one hour. Thursday, he visits unfaithful in the community. Brethren, when that man gets through with all of that, he still has 90% of his time left. People say, oh, we couldn't do that. Brethren, we already do that but we do it with social media instead of with the Lord's work. It's hurting us with regard to minutes. Here's the second point. I call this one morality. I want you to think about how modern technology has hurt us in the country with regard to morality. First, I want to talk about homosexuality. Has homosexuality gained ground in recent years? I saw a statistic just recently that said in 1988 that support for gay marriage in our country was 11%. In 2021, it was 70%. We went from 11% in 1988 to 70% in 2021. That is a huge leap and a relatively short amount of time. If you look at uh, June of this year, June is now proclaimed as Pride Month for the homosexual movement. If you use television services such as Hulu or Netflix or Disney, during Pride Month, they will plaster it with programs that tout homosexuality or have a lesbian couple, and, and they push that. Disney is not even being secretive about this anymore. What they're saying now is, we are, we are pushing this. How are they pushing it? Through the media? Through their movies? How are they doing it? 
What they said in a recent interview was, it used to be that we were more subtle about how we do this, but they said, we don't even have to be subtle anymore. They said, we are open about it. In fact, in June of this year, they put out the new Buzz Lightyear movie that had an openly gay kiss amongst these animated characters. And they said, by the end of this year, they intended to have either gay or lesbians, LGBT, transgender, or multicultural characters in every single program that they produced. You see, the, the devil's using the media. The majority of Americans now believe that people who are homosexual are born gay or lesbian. Why do they believe that? Is it because the evidence says that? Friends, the evidence does not say that. The evidence says the opposite of that. So why do people believe that? And the answer is because the media has done a good job of spinning a lie. If you read Facebook, you'll believe it. In fact, I have an iPhone and it gives you news. If you swipe all the way over to the left, there's a section where you can get the news. The problem is in the news feed, it says what is going on in the world. All of the choices are by rank liberal media sources that push immorality to include homosexuality. It seems like if you watch television, it doesn't matter what program you watch these days, there's going to be a transgender or a homosexual character on it. And that person will always be the smart, reasonable individual. And the people that oppose that, they will always be the bigots. I'm telling you, the devil is using technology to brainwash us. Millennials support homosexual marriage at a rate of 83%. Why is that? Because the media has turned up the heat in the last 20 years and it has worked. Is it affecting the Lord's church? There is an article on ChristianChronicle.org that discusses this. One of the things that I found is that Lipscomb University, I believe it was in 2018, had an LGBT day on campus where they painted the bison in rainbow colors and students stood around and discussed these issues and passed out cookies. And I have a friend who is employed there, he's an IT guy, and I called him and I said, brother, is this correct? Did this really happen? And he said, yeah, yeah, it really did happen. I could tell you some other stories about how it's hit the brotherhood, but that's not for now. What about pornography? Technology has done a lot of damage to the Lord's church, to the country with regard to pornography. There is an absolute epidemic. You know, years ago, if someone wanted to view pornography, they had to go somewhere and buy it. And they ran the risk that someone would see them. And so there was kind of a built-in inhibition. But it's not that way anymore. Now because of technology, the internet has made it so that people can view pornography in the privacy of their homes and they don't think anyone ever knows about it. You know, a few years ago my next door neighbor came to me and he was asking for help because he told me, he knew I was a preacher, and he said that his wife had repeatedly caught him viewing pornography on his smartphone. I didn't even know you could view it on your smartphone at that point in time. But she had caught him and she said, I can't take his constant cheating on me. That's the way she felt when he viewed pornography on the phone. According to research, approximately two-thirds of U.S. men view pornography at least on a monthly basis. The age breakdown was like this. 18 to 30 age group, 79% of them use pornography at least monthly. Age 31 to 49, 67% at least monthly. 50 to 68, 50%. And the study said that 30% of young men ages 18 to 30 age group view pornography every single day. And I tell you what, social media, including Facebook, contributes to this. Now somebody says, Don, what are you talking about? Facebook doesn't allow pornography. But I tell you what, it allows some immodesty and there are some things that are pretty close to pornography and young boys see this and it gets the wheels turning in their mind and they want to see more and more. Modesty has certainly been affected by social media. 
Entertainment has really taken an impact on us because the devil has done a lot of damage using movies and TV. He makes us think that homosexuality is completely normal. If you ever watch HGTV, you would think that every couple who buys a house is gay because everyone who's repairing a house or who is buying a house is homosexual. It's incredible how they push this. Through the movies and through TV, the devil gives us storylines where the gay person is persecuted. He has us rooting for the adulterous relationship. We're hoping that the thief doesn't get caught. You see, the devil has broken down walls for us. I was doing a gospel meeting in Texas uh, a few years ago, and um, this particular congregation, one of the elders had me over to his house for lunch, and in his living room next to the television set, he had a sign there that said, How dare we be entertained by the things that sent Jesus to the cross. I liked it. I took a picture of it. How dare we be entertained by the things that sent Jesus to the cross. When it comes to technology and our entertainment, we need to keep that in mind. Here is the third point. Misinformation. Now, what do I mean by this? How has technology hurt us with regard to misinformation? The New York Times had an article that said that, quote, the experts are worried because social media platforms are filled with misinformation. They said young people have no idea what is real and what is fake. And I tell you what, a big part of the problem is what the, quote, experts are calling fake is actually the truth, and vice versa. Forbes.com said this, here's a quote, whether it is about the presidential election, climate change, COVID-19 vaccines, whatever, misinformation continues to spread rapidly across social media. According to a Pew Research Service study from January of this year, more than eight and in 10 U.S. adults, 86% say that they get their news from their smartphone. 86% of the people are getting their news from their smartphone. A lot of them are getting their news from Facebook. Let that sink in for a minute. North Carolina State University did a peer-reviewed study. That is, it's supposed to be unbiased. It's supposed to be a fair, legitimate study. And it unmistakably, quote, unmistakably exposed big tech's most egregious attempt to tilt the scale toward left-wing candidates. What does that mean? They did a peer-reviewed study, and they saw that big tech is using their influence toward liberal media. They said, the same article talks about how Democrat leaders tried to persuade tech companies to limit certain information before the Roe versus Wade decision. That is, the great victory with regard to abortion, before that came out, they tried to spin the information, stifle the information. Why? To fit the agenda. Top sources that people go to to get their information, you know where they go? Two of the top sources are Google and YouTube, both of which are filled with liberal bias. And so if your child is going to get their information there, they're going to be in trouble. Now, just imagine this. Imagine a new convert or, or child. What if you let them spend five hours to seven and a half hours a day reading denominational literature? What if you took a new convert and said, spend seven hours a day reading denominational literature? Would that affect their knowledge of the Bible? That would affect a mature Christian's knowledge of the Bible. That's a different discussion for a different day, but the Lord's church is being hurt this way because a lot of young preachers are spending all their time reading denominational literature and commentaries online, and it's hurting us. That's part of why GBN is trying to put out some good literature by sound brethren. We need to be teaching the truth biblically, scientifically, politically, socially, sexually, morally, because if people are getting their information from social media and these other sources, it's going to be severely skewed. And the fact checkers are not the kind of fact checkers that we need to be listening to. Anyway, imagine if a person gets all of their politics this way. What if everything they learn about religion is this way? 
What if, what if everything they learned about abortion is this way? Or about the election? Or about COVID? If you didn't agree with the government when it came to COVID, you were labeled as a false, uh, a person spreading false information. Now things are coming out that are saying, well, it actually, it actually was right. But a few months ago, it would have been false information. The media, the devil is using misinformation to hurt us. Here's the last one. I want to say something about the mission. What do I mean by the mission? What I mean is, what is our objective? Why are we here? Why did God put us on this earth? What is our mission? I have limited time on this earth. What should I be doing with it? Here's the answer. Revelation 4 and verse 11, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. What is the purpose of my life according to that verse? For Thy pleasure. They were created. I exist here for the pleasure of God. Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments. This is the whole duty of man, the King James says. The word duty was added. It's not in the original. It really says, fear God and keep His commandments. This is the whole of man. I like it better without it. That's what man is. That's what we are about. We exist to bring glory to God. And if I fail to do that, I have missed my purpose. I might graduate the top of my class, and I might get a PhD. I might be a respected academic scholar. But if I fail to do this, I've missed my purpose. I might build a huge, successful company and retire as a multimillionaire. But if I fail to do this, I have missed my purpose. I might find a cure for cancer. But if I fail to do this, I have missed my purpose. I heard a story years ago, an illustration about a watchmaker who was drafted during the Civil War. And his unit was positioned in a certain area, a point, while they were waiting for their orders, their marching orders. And they ended up being there for weeks, turned into months. During that time, many people, they found out he was a watchmaker, a watch repairman, and so they brought their watches to him to fix. Eventually, it got to the point they received their orders to go into battle, and the watchmaker said, I can't possibly go into battle. I've got too many watches to repair. He forgot why he was there. Brethren, I believe our modern technology sometimes has made us forget why we are here. I believe we have a generation of people who has come to believe that our greatest purpose in life is our own personal comfort, to be happy all the time, to be entertained all the time. And to that end, we've got smartphones, and they're loaded with movies and music and games. We've got our tablets, and they're linked to Hulu and Netflix and Amazon Prime. Fifty percent of American households now have a streaming service. Our cars have DVD players in them and XM radio and Bluetooth and Pandora and Spotify. Our homes have Xbox, PlayStation, Xbox Plus, Dish Network, cable TV, every streaming service you can imagine. According to a 2016 Nielsen statistic, average American adults are watching five hours and four minutes of television per day. The bulk of that, it says, is on HD TVs. 94% of Americans' house, houses have HD TVs. Some of this is on tablets. It said 58% on tablets. This was in 2016. It's going to be higher now. They say the average American household watches, now listen to this, they watch an entire season of a TV show in five days. It's called binge watching. Brethren, I don't know how we could look at these numbers, the time that is spent watching TV, playing with our technology, and argue that we have not been distracted from our mission. I want you to do something with me. Don't share these answers. I want you to just answer to yourself. I'm getting long. I apologize. I did this this morning. I want you to answer these questions. How many hours have I spent in prayer this week, if, if it's hours? How many hours have I spent in Bible study, if, if it's hours? Maybe more this week because of the lectureship. 
How many hours have I spent in attendance at worship? How many hours have I spent teaching others or doing evangelism? Luke 19.10, Jesus said that His mission was to seek and to save the lost. He's the head, we're the body. Our mission as the body is the same as the head, to seek and save the lost. We exist to give glory to God, to bring Him pleasure. John 9 and 4, Jesus said, I must work the works of Him that sent me while it is day, for the night cometh when no man can work. That is to say, I have a mission to do. I've got work to do, and I've got a limited amount of time to do it. I will honestly tell you that this lesson made me stop and realize I've been distracted by technology and it made me start doing better. Is technology killing God's people? At one point in the life of Jesus, a lawyer came to him and asked the question, Master, what is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, all of thy soul, and all of thy mind. This is the first and the great commandment. Matthew 22, 36 through 38. May we never let technology, or anything else for that matter, cause us to lose sight of our goal. Thank you for your good attention tonight. I appreciate it so much. It may be that we've got someone here this evening who needs to respond to the Lord's invitation. If you're here and you're not a Christian, you've got opportunity tonight to obey the gospel, hearing, believing, repenting, confessing, and being baptized. If that is the case, we have those who are ready to assist you tonight. If you are here and you are a member of the body of Christ, you've got sin in your life that maybe you need to take care of publicly, we would be honored to go to God and to pray for you and to assist you in that manner. Tonight, if you need to respond to the Lord's invitation, we invite you to come as together we stand and sing the invitation song.